Hi, welcome back to the second episode about maintaining the Star Adventure. In the first episode we saw about the maintenance for the wedge, how we can use it and how we can uh, tune it in order to have the best performances. It is now time to work about uh, the unit itself, the Star Adventure itself. Now, um, this is a great mount, but sometimes, as everything, uh, you need to service it. And sometimes, because this is still low-end equipment, you need to sometimes it's time to tune it to tune up the mount to improve the performances. In particular, there is a known problem on the Star Adventure that is a somehow stiff rotation, so the payload doesn't spin freely. It usually is not a problem when tracking, it may be more a problem when you want to balance your gear. We will see that in another video, but just want to mention this. And um, anyway, if you need to regrease or you need to fix uh, this stiff rotation, um, you need to disassemble the mount. And so this video is about disassembling the Star Adventure in order to arrive to look inside and to have the clutch assembly in our hand. Also, this allows us to see how to regrease the mount and also to uh, understand how the clutch works. This clutch is somehow a uh, conundrum for the beginnings. They, don't, they are often unsure what to do. The short answer is to yes. If you need to track, you have to screw this knob, the clutch knob, all the way and if you do not need to track and you want to manual move your payload, then you need to unscrew this uh, knob. So, what do you need in order to disassemble the Star Adventurer? You do not need much. All it strictly requires is a number 3 hexagonal key, a number 2 hexagonal key, it's handy to have a flat head screwdriver and if you are about to regreasing then this is a great grease it is a super lube and is a multi-purpose synthetic grease it is work from minus 45 Fahrenheit to 450 Fahrenheit it's quite thick so I use it and uh, I found no problem at all um, with the standard mentor Okay, so where do we where do we begin? We begin by removing the mount the mounting platform. Now I will try to use the terminology that is used in the manual so that you do not get uh, confused. So this is the mounting platform. We need to remove it in order to access the clutch assembly. Um, sometimes I use uh, there are terms that are not used in the manual, so. I w for lack of better words, I came up with something like clutch assembly or payload driving assembly. But we will see this part uh, more in detail later in the video. So we start by removing the mounting platform. Yeah, this is held in place uh, by four bolts. You use your number three hexagonal key to remove it. And uh, what is where this mount, mounting platform is bolted on is on the clutch assembly which in its turn is bolted on the uh, polar scope and that is why when you rotate the payload the polar scope is also rotating so all this part they are um, connected together and then of course there is uh, something that must be connected to the motor and we will see that in, in a minute now, with the four bolts out of the way, we can simply lift the mounted platform and remove it from the body of the Star Adventure. Let's set it there. Now, at the moment here, there is no grease, there is no nothing to mess around. Now, this is the clutch bolt, well, the, the clutch knob. That's the top of what I call um, the payload driving assembly. This is the piece where the mounting platform is directly connected on. And below there, you have uh, four screw um, that connect the payload driving assembly to the polar scope. Now the payload driving assembly together with the clutch knob and the ring gear that is inside the mount is part of the clutch assembly. Now the next step is to remove the clutch assembly itself. Now as I said 
the clutch, if the clutch is disengaged, you can rotate the payload um, mounting assembly and that's rotate also the polar scope. So when you are trying to remove these bolts down there that are connected to the polar scope, everything is start rotating together. So just screw in, screw back in two of the bolts that were retaining the mounting platform, like so, so that then you can use the number three hexagonal key to stop the polar scope from rotating while you use the hexagonal key number two to remove the bolts there. So let's see how we can well, how we can do that. So we use the key number three to stop the, rota the rotation and then we are going to unscrew this bolt here. So some people like to remove the knob before but for this for the purpose of this video I will remove that later so that I can show you how can I slide off from the body of the Sarah Adventurer the whole clutch assembly. Now what you see here down here that is the warm gear so this will turn forever and uh, it's connected via a gearbox to the motor. Now this warm gear grabs the ring gear that is this part here of the clutch assembly. This teeth goes in contact with the warm gear and actually cap couple the ring gear to the motor. Now before things get too messy let me just grab some gloves so that I don't put too much grease around. Now I want to illustrate how the clutch works. If I grab and hold the ring gear and the clutch is released then I can still spin my payload. But when I tie the clutch up, well then I cannot move the payload anymore with respect to the ring gear. So the clutch is engaged and now I can track. How does it work? How did I engage the clutch? How did I couple the payload to the ring gear? The answer is simply friction. So basically this clutch assembly is made by the knob that now I'm going to remove and this knob is screwed on the top of the payload driving assembly. Now here there is so there are some, uh, uh, there are two um, metal flat ring, metal rings, and that is because you have here a bearings ring. This allows the clutch knob to rotate over the ring gear without too much effort, without wearing out parts. Now with this out of the way. I show you how the, the payload driving assembly is housed inside the ring gear and to remove it just push it and slide it out like so. Now be careful when you remove the ring gear from the payload driving assembly you can see here a friction material that is sitting between the two. So when the clutch is engaged you are tightening the, the knob the clutch knob, which in turn is pushing firmly the uh, ring gear down onto this friction material. And uh, the friction that you have, that this material creates between the payload, um, driving assembly and the ring gear is what allows the, the motor to turn the payload. So you don't want to have any grease on this friction material because otherwise well, you will reduce the capability of the motor to drive the payload because you will reduce the friction. If you are here to regrease, the parts you need to regrease are this outer rim and then on the ring gear, the inner rim, not this part because this is where the friction material is there. You can see that there are some, uh, some residue of friction material on this part. So you want to grease the inner rim and then you want to grease of course the teeth uh, you want to grease the bearing rings you want to grease 
this part, the warm gear and the ring gear. So now I have manipulated this mount quite a lot. So maybe it's time to give it a bit of, uh, to add a bit of grease and to the part. So the first thing I do is to remove the friction material. Then I take my grease and I work my way around this edge something like so and then I spread it evenly like so so that I have good grease in between the metal metal contact of these two parts let's put back the friction material be careful that you don't have grease on the on the surface of contact so we put them down so and then we take we turn the ring gear and we take a bit of grease and we put it on this part and we put it here So then you can use a, a, a little brush or something or, or toothpick something to help you to spread evenly the grease. Now there was already some grease so I don't have to do it very thoroughly and now I can simply slide this off. Now the because I'm I've greased the ring gear when I put the two together I'm drive the, the grease I put up I'm driving the grease away from the friction material so it's coming out this way while the friction material is down if I was doing the other side so I was, if I was putting the grease on the payload driving assembly when I was inserting the the ring gear then I would have pushed the grease onto the friction material that that's not really good so now we can evenly spread the grease here and then we can also put some grease on the teeth of the gear so that we can better lubricate and ensure that we have a smooth contact between the gear teeth of the gears okay so everything looks good now this grease will be spread on the worn gear as well when the mount is turning so I will not grease both sides for the in this video Okay, so this is grease, it's now ready to be insert. You may want to grease up also the um, the bearing rings, but now I did that recently, so there is quite a lot of grease already. I don't want to put too much. Okay, so then you slide one inside the other, and we start reassembling the clutch something like so and then we put it back inside the Star Adventurer okay, now we are almost done with the servicing we have released the mount we have uh, uh, understood how the clutch works and now it's time to bolt the clutch the, uh, the clutch assembly to the polar scope to do so you have to align the holes in the payload driving assembly with those with threads that are in the polar scope. Now it's easier somehow to work on the wedge. That's another use of the wedge so that the mount, the, the star adventure is stable. Now what you want to do is to grab your polar scope and uh, to rotate it so that the holes they um, match with the threads 
and now you can you can simply take your hexagonal screw and screw back all these bolts okay now to tight again these bolts we use these two uh, the two bolts that we that were for the mounting platform and uh, we lock the rotation of the polar scope using the other hexagonal key and then we tie this up okay, one two and so this key here is preventing everything the whole assembly to rotate you can also do that by um, screwing down the clutch knob and engaging the clutch but you will put some stress on the gears and maybe you don't want to do that great now everything is in its place except for the mounting platform that will take a few extra seconds we put back now we use the hexagonal key number three and we put the mounting platform back in its place there is no real orientation you have to take care so just put it in as you want doesn't matter and then tie them up real good okay this is all it takes to maintain your start adventure now that we have regreased the part now check with the clutch undone that the rotation is smooth that there is no um, too much of friction that can that, so that is an indication that something is wrong but if the rotation is running smooth then uh, everything looks good you want to spread the grease that we put on the ring gear over the one gear so I suggest you even if you are at home Put in some battery and let the Star Adventure rotate at 12 times the sidereal tracking speed so that the ring gear and the warm gear they are turning together and the grease get better distributed. After you disassemble the Star Adventure and you assemble it back, always verify that you don't have a backlash to remove. So this put an end to this video and uh, I will see you in the third part about how to remove the backlash in the uh, Star Adventure and thanks for watching